What is up, everybody? Um, Don J Rod, what's going on? Hey, this is uh, this is the hot tag kind of. I mean, it's similar to the hot tag in that uh, you know I'm talking about wrestling. If uh, if you want to talk about wrestling with me, um, it's an interesting time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen, because the world of wrestling has been ever evolving, ever changing. We saw this this week, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's not that I want to keep harping on this, and I, you know, there is a lot to talk about in the world of professional wrestling, but I just it it kind of tickles me that the NWA Women's Championship is now being seen on AEW. That's a big deal. And I think a lot of people have slept on the fact that that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Um, Serena Deep has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that she is more than appropriately qualified more than appropriate qualified. Did I really mean to say that? What I meant to say is that Serena Deep has proven that she is qualified to carry the Burke. Victories over Thunder Rosa and victories over Allison K are more than enough uh, to put on your resume. Resume. Res resume. Why does that weird sound? So, the word sounds so weird to me. What is going on? Why is my brain melting? It's because it's Friday. And normally, right above me, or next to me, whichever platform you're watching, I am joined by the handsome and intelligent and well-spoken, articulate even, Will It's Daily, but uh, Will wanted the day off, and quite frankly, I don't blame him. But uh, getting back to professional wrestling, right? That's what we're here for, is we're here to talk wrestling. Does it tickle anyone else? Does it make you kind of go, hmm, to see that the Women's World Championship is now being seen more in AEW than it is on any kind of NWA programming? Dave Scooby says Friday the 13th, and man, you ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. It's been one of those days, and I don't normally get too uh, too personal. I don't normally get down, but man, I've this has been a weird week. I'm run down, guys. My batteries are near empty. Todd Kennelly just joined us. And uh, I, I do want to say thank you, Todd, for uh, giving us the shout-out on uh, Primetime Live. That was seriously the highlight of my week. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching Primetime Live, I mean, shame on you, first of all, because for $7.99 an episode or get the bundle pack for $24.99, some of the best wrestling that's out there right now. And if you're not watching it, you're really missing out. Uh, despite, um, not despite, that's not the right word, uh, the show itself has a, a really interesting concept in that the talent comes in and around all the time. So you're seeing different faces every week. Um, what I mean by that is um, there is a, there's a big turnover in talent, not, not that they're not invited back, but you see new faces every week. And some, some people you see more often than others. The Real Money Brothers have been there like five times now. Danny Limelight is a hallmark of the show. Early on, we saw a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, Kevin Martinson and Heather Monroe. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been some championship wrestling from Hollywood talent appearing on the show. 
but they have a nice mix. You know, we had Hammerstone in there twice. Uh, we've had, uh, and he's the West Coast Pro Wrestling World Champion. We've had uh, SoCal Distancing on a handful of times. We're going to get Ray Rosas next week. So you see some familiar faces, but then, like, uh, some of the guys that you uh, wouldn't imagine seeing um, on a show like this, like Chris Dickinson is, is, is really taking the United Wrestling Network by storm. Uh, you know, we've got guys like, uh, oh, my wife is here. Hey, what's up? Good looking. <laughs> um, we got, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of, and, and now my daughter's here. It's a family affair. Thanks, everyone, for checking us out. Um, hi, Claire. That's my daughter. She has type 1 diabetes. She'll let you know. Hi, Michelle. So where I was going is this talent is ever evolving, and I think that's really cool because you're not stuck with the same storylines. You're not stuck with the same uh, same old, same old. Now, there are some faces I would like to see come back to Primetime Live, like the Tribe. They were a phenomenal tag team. They still are a phenomenal tag team, but I would love to see them back in Primetime Live, especially now that we have new NWA Tag Team Champions. I think a, a matchup between... Aaron Stevens and J.R. Kratos taking on the likes of Hawaiian Lion and Navajo Warrior. I think that would be some excellent television, and I think that tag team match would be pretty intense. We saw the first time that the Tribe were on uh, Primetime Live. They battled the Wolf Zaddies. Again, another tag team I would love to see return to Primetime Live. And those teams just went all over the place. Um, I'm reading comments, too. Mickey Shamble says... Hey, Jay, I've been loving Primetime Live more and more with each episode. Really into it a lot now. That's great, man. I I really think Dave Marquez is knocking it out of the park here. You know, and I, I give him all the credit because he's the guy whose name is on the marquee. But let's be honest, it's a it's a collective effort. You know, you've got great announcing. Todd Kennelly is, is the voice of uh, Southern California Wrestling for the better part of a decade. He's always going to do a great job. Uh, I've been very happy with James Kincaid. Uh, I didn't know a lot about him before the show, but he's really added some uh, some extra nuances to the program. Has been, you know, really sliding into that role as the uh, as a color commentator. As a it, it, he's doing a well uh, a good job as well. And then of course, um, uh, Bulletproof. You know, he's been he's phenomenal. His insight in the world of MMA and comparing the combat sports to uh, pro wrestling and kind of pulling the comparisons and giving you some background. I really think that he's done a terrific job as well. So I guess what I'm saying is that um, in terms of at least the announcers and Al Alyssa Moran, uh, I almost said Alyssa Milano, uh, she did a great job as well too. Um, I'd like to see her back, uh, you know, rotating in and out. It's kind of hard because I know that schedules and everything else, but uh, she had a lot of insight that added uh, something special to the show as well. Um, I'm just, again, reading some of your comments. And I see that uh, Lamb says that the West Coast Wrecking Crew, i and Nelson would be a nice addition. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I mean, Nelson and i were a pretty dominant tag team in the area. They were known as the 1% previously wrestled in future stars of wrestling uh, wrestled up in defy uh, in portland oregon had a few matches in northern california they're a team that certainly would bring some more value to the tag team division and again when you have teams like you know the four minutes of heat you've got uh, like the, the above mentioned uh, cash a uh, real money brothers not cash money brothers real money brothers uh, socal distancing i mean there's a lot of great tag teams and there's certainly uh is room for more. I need. I see Dave Scooby says we need to see more Trevor Murdoch. He needs to defend that national title, and I agree, man. And I I wholeheartedly agree. And I, in fact, I was that was kind of what I was going to start talking about today before I went off on my tangent. Is who would be a good opponent for Trevor Murdoch? You know, the NWA and Primetime Live have crowned now. Uh, let's see, they crowned a new national champion in Trevor Murdoch. They crowned a new TV champion in. Uh, Elijah Burke, they crowned a new women's champion in uh, Serena Deep, and then the new tag team champions in Stevens and Kratos. So that's four crowns, four championships that have changed hands on Primetime Live, and we haven't seen a lot of those champions come back and defend those titles. Now, it's still early. I mean, we're only in month number, what, three of Primetime Live? 
nine episodes in, so there's still time for these guys to and gals to come back and and uh, make title defenses. But um, Trevor Murdoch comes out because uh, for a lot of reasons. Number one, Trevor Murdoch has this history uh, with Dave Marquez. He'd been around for a long time. But furthermore, he really connected with the audience. And when he won that title, the National Heavyweight Championship, and gave that uh, impassioned speech to the viewing audience, I mean, it really felt like it was something special. And to know that that moment, that momentum that was established when Trevor Murdoch won the title is kind of fizzled out. You know, that's one of the, the disadvantages of the NWA power machine not running on full cylinders right now is they've got these great champions but haven't been able to showcase them. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world to keep sending champions to primetime live and defend their titles, but, you know, that's not the only place they can even appear. I mean, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood literally is taping, uh, I think, uh, maybe it's once a month, maybe it's twice a month. I'm not entirely sure, but I know that they're knocking out a lot of matches. It'd be very easy for a wrestler who is coming to Primetime Live to maybe uh, stop in a few days earlier and uh, be a part of those Hollywood television tapings. It really it makes, it makes so much sense. I can't believe it's not happening already. But who would be a good choice for Trevor Murdoch? Leave your comments. Tell me who you think would be a good challenge. I mean, if you look specifically at the NWA roster, guys we know who are still attached to the brand. I mean, we're talking about Tim Storm. We're talking about Thomas Latimer. Maybe Eli Drake. Uh, so... Oh, and Todd just said they shot eight episodes over the past weekend. So in two days, they shot about two months worth of TV. So that's uh, that's pretty full. Uh, Chris says he would like to see Trevor Murdoch versus Rocky Romero. As much as I love Rocky, Rocky Romero, and as good as Rocky Romero is, I think Rocky Romero would be so um, disadvantaged in terms of size and strength. I mean, Rocky Romero's he's about 5'6", five, 5'7". About 180 pounds at the most. And uh, Trevor Murdoch is like, you know, 6'3", probably close to 280, 290. I mean, it would be a very much a distinct advantage for Trevor Murdoch. But that doesn't mean that they can't pull a good match out of it. Um, let's see, more of your comments. I, I missed one. CWE Fury in Texas is also an option to film stuff, according to Lamb over at Championship Wrestling championship wrestling from Hollywood fan news and you're right it is too it's just a, a matter of um, you know I don't even know if they have a direct connection there I, I know that uh, uh, Tim Storm is a part of the uh, roster for SWE Fury but he's not exactly the owner and I don't know if he can make those kind of matches or even have those kind of uh, opportunities for the NWA whether if the NWA would even choose to take advantage of those opportunities uh, Dave Scooby says Watts versus Murdoch. Now, now you're onto something. I like it a lot, actually. Watts versus Trevor Murdoch. Now you're talking because there are very few people who can get in the ring with uh, Trevor Murdoch and stand toe to toe and not be intimidated by the size, not be intimidated by the the uh, strength. And Watts is definitely one of those guys. Um, Watts. If you guys have watched Championship Wrestling from Hollywood for a while you'll see that Watts' maturation over the course of the last decade, he went from just, uh, to me, he was like a, just okay. Like I, I never really saw him a, as a threat to Adam Pierce's world title, even though he had a challenge for it. I never really saw him as a threat to, you know, the television champion Scorpio Sky at the time. But as the time progressed, I think Watts, I think Watts has become so good and so underrated and that if people actually gave him the opportunity, ooh, Watts could be Watts could be the next big thing out of SoCal. And we talk a, a lot on our show about Danny Limelight and how good Danny Limelight is. And I do believe that 2021 is going to only eclipse the success that Danny Limelight had in 2020. But Watts is one of these guys who I think really the world is about to open up. I love you too, Claire. Thanks for watching. 
Uh, Lamb suggests Pablo Esco versus Trevor Murdoch, and now that's a big Haas fight. That's a great Haas fight, actually. And, uh, you know, Pablo Esco has not done much as a singles wrestler on primetime live, but imagining Pablo Esco against the national champion, I mean, with Danny Limelight in his corner, that, man, that could be a really fun match, too. Um, you know, Pablo Esco is no pushover. He's the one-man lucha gang. And when he's out there, I mean, he's, again, not intimidated by anyone. He's hungry. I love saying that. He's hungry. That's fat guys love saying that. Um, so, yeah, that would be another good matchup. Uh, Chris Drummond, uh, big Chris Dog, mentions that he thinks the NWA on Pluto should become a thing in 2021. And Chris, I, I've, I, I just recently downloaded the Pluto app. I did that because I wanted to check out Impact Wrestling to see what that was all about on the Pluto app. And I I just uh, read, I think, you actually, Chris, you sent me that message about MLW getting a channel on Pluto. Uh, Stavin. That's right. That's right, TK. Stavin. Um, but the problem with the NWA is they don't have a lot of hours. You know, they don't have a lot of... Th- their library is not as... I mean, like, look... Comparing Championship Wrestling from Hollywood that's been on the air for 10 years with 500-plus episodes. I mean, that is a library that I would love to see show up on Pluto. You know what I mean? Like, they could literally run shows from Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, Championship Wrestling from Arizona. They could show footage from the old NWA Pro Wrestling Showcase, the NWA Showcase. I don't even know if Dave has the rights to it, but maybe even the Tokon TV events that they were filming out in Santa Monica. I mean, there's a wealth, a wealth of matches that is in that Dave Marquez video library. But the NWA, I mean, let's face it, they've had about, what, 22 episodes of Power? They had about um, four pay-per-views in 2019? They had one in 2018? So I don't know that you have the same kind of leverage for a Pluto channel on on for the NWA. Now I'm not saying that down the road that wouldn't make a lot of sense. And you know they do have I mean they do have some content. If they put Nick Aldis back in the studio and had him start recording that what's causing all this again, and and put Eli Drake back in the studio and do the Eli Drake show. I mean now you're starting to talk about something, but they still don't have they still don't have a big enough arsenal, a big enough library to really make sense to be on a Pluto channel. Uh, Dave Scooby says, maybe down the road, Jordan Clearwater against Trevor. He reminds me of a young Lance Cade. You know, you're not the only one to say that, Dave Scooby. Um, Jordan Clearwater certainly, you know, I think he's, again, one of these guys that uh, Hollywood has a lot of uh, hope for down the road. I mean, you you look at some of the names that have recently appeared, um, whether it be Primetime Live or Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and you get guys like Max Caster, who I I 100% thought that he would be part of that new future, that new uh, vision of Primetime Live of, of the United Wrestling Network, and he got picked up by AEW. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot more people get picked up by AEW. Uh, Jordan Clearwater, uh, Watts, I mean, there's Ray Rosas, Danny Limelight. I mean, when you talk about it, really, WWE can't sign everybody. AEW can't sign everybody. Impact can't sign everybody. Ring of Honor can't sign everybody. And MLW can't sign everybody. And the NWA cannot sign everybody. But there just seems to be this uh, uh, wealth, uh, a fountain of talent here in Southern California. And I'm not saying that all the talent is from SoCal, but it just seems that a, a lot of talent is just accumulating here. Thunder Studios accumulating in Hollywood, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Ocean View Pavilion in Port Wyneme, Long Beach, Port Wyneme is just producing these matches with great talents, and and you know the cream always finds a way to rise to the top, and uh, you know for every time that uh, Peter Avalon gets picked up, you know you have an opportunity to go out there and find a Chris Dickinson, and every time you have an opportunity to showcase somebody like Mike Bennett, you know. The talent is there. There's great talent out there. We'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. Lamb says, talking about the NWA Showcase, don't forget the new Alliance Wrestling Podcast merch. Woo! Lamb. 
Thank you, sir. Yeah, we just introduced a new T-shirt. I don't have a way of showing it here on the Instagram stories or if you're watching on Twitch. Uh, I don't have a way of putting that up right now. But, yeah, we do have uh, new merchandise, and we're going to have more merchandise coming soon. Uh, these hats are available. Um, we'll also have, uh, like I said, the new Alliance, the Alliance blog T-shirt, and a lot more fun stuff uh, coming. If you guys would check that out, you can visit alliance-wrestling.com where some of the merch links are hot and available. We have to re kind of redo all of that because um, we're just adding more merchandise as we go. So um, things will have to change up on that end. But so yeah, I, I've seen a lot of good names, a lot of. Interesting challenges for Trevor Murdoch. And just to recap, we were talking about uh, we were talking about Jordan Clearwater, uh, Watts, uh, Pablo Esco. I love that one. That's a great pick. Um, of course, I mean it, it all has to happen with the NWA. The NWA is uh, the the party responsible for booking the NWA title matches. I mean they booked um, they booked um, Mike Bennett versus Nick Aldis. They booked Thunder Rosa and uh, and uh, Elaine. Oh, Thunder Rosa wrestled, um, gosh, why am I drawing a blank? Was that Elena Black? No, Priscilla Kelly. She, uh, Priscilla Kelly. Um, and then, uh, of course, you know, the hair, the uh, national title match between Murdoch and Stevens and Zicky Dice and Elijah Burke, all that was booked through the NWA office. So if anyone from the NWA is listening, I th- hope we gave you a few, a list of a few challenges that, uh, would make sense for Trevor Murdoch. Um, Lamb says, oh, on the Corey Graves podcast, Adam Pierce said he wouldn't mind stepping in the ring again. Whew. Yeah, I mean, I heard that one, too. I watched the video, and, you know, <laughs> I don't think he said that he'd want to step into the ring again, but I think he said he would do whatever was expected of him. And, uh, you know, the five-time NWA World's Heavyweight Champion who uh, has meant so much for that brand and for that title um, certainly could have a, a bevy of good opponents to face off if the WWE ever decide to put him back in the ring. Personally, I would love to see him come out of retirement, abandon the WWE system, and come back to the NWA and help establish that brand yet once again, this time as a chief rival to Nick Aldis. But we don't... I don't foresee that actually happening, guys, because, you know... Uh, there's something to be said for job security and there's something to be said for getting that paycheck every uh, two weeks. And, uh, you know, we wish nothing but the best for Adam Pierce and family. We wish nothing but success for him going forward in life. But yeah, part of me would love to see him step back into the ring against, uh, against Nick Aldis. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. I think, uh, again, it's always fun chatting with you guys. We do, uh, we do do a live doo doo. I said doo doo. We do a live podcast on YouTube and Twitch every Tuesday. We call it the pre party, and that's where uh, it's just usually me talking with you guys about wrestling and get you hyped up for the big uh, prime time live pay per view. Um, this week is going to be a doozy as we see the return of Ruby Rays as she takes on. Uh, uh, Lindsay Snow, the American Kaiju, that's going to be great. I'm a big Rays fan. We always back Rays here at the Alliance blog. Maybe we'll get her to come on a podcast soon. Uh, then, of course, Danny Limelight, he was on our podcast just last week. He'll be making his return and uh, an opponent to be named. Uh, we've also got um, Ray Rosas uh, returning to Holly, uh, to Primetime Live to defend the Hollywood Heritage Championship. That should be interesting, too. In two weeks, we'll see them uh, crown their new... Uh, United World Champion, and I can't wait for that. But we'll talk about that on Tuesday. And then again on Thursdays, Thursdays it's me, uh, the former NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion, Kevin Frazier, and of course DKM. We talk, we recap what happened on Primetime Live, and also kind of break down the news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance and the United Wrestling Network. And of course, hopefully next Friday, uh, my, my boy Will Martin will be back and will be here to talk some uh, some hot tag, some tag team wrestling. Um, we'll see. But again, I appreciate you guys checking us out. Hope you guys have enjoyed the podcast, and uh, we'll see you next time at the matches. Be positive, get positive, 